In this video, we're going to have a look at a couple different ways that you can import images into your Power BI reports. We're going to go through some of the different ways that you can import images and why you choose one over the other. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So using images is one of the ways that you can enhance the look and feel of your Power BI reports. You may want to use it for things like static images such as logos, or you may want to represent your data using images to enhance your user experience. And Power BI provides a couple different ways that you can import images into your actual report. So we're going to look at some of these today. So the first one and the most simple one is to simply just import importing your image from your local machine. So here we are in my Power BI reports and we're going to try to import our image from here. So to do that, we're going to go to the insert ribbon on the top and then we're going to select image from these elements. You'll see that I have a bunch of um, images here uh, in this folder and I'm going to just try to import one just for testing purposes. I'm going to hit open and there you go. So you have your uh, image in a visual element here that you can move around and place anywhere in your report. So this method is a good one to use if you want to put static images into your report. And it's a pretty simple one to do. You simply click the image, import it from your desktop and you have it working. However, I personally don't really use this option too much. And that's because in most of my scenarios in which I need to put some static image in my report, I typically put it as part of my canvas background, which is something that you can set up individually here in the format settings. So this is where you would set up your canvas background settings is in the format section when you click the page itself without clicking any of the visuals. And it's because this method using the background doesn't add any other visual elements in the page, which Power BI needs to load every single time you open up this report. So basically less visual elements in the page means better performance for your report. So the next one that you can use is to use public images that you can find on the web. So here's an example of an image that I found on on the web. It's an image of the Microsoft logo that is in the Wikipedia page for Microsoft. So if you want to use this logo or image into your report, you simply need to copy the URL, go to your reports. So from your report, you simply need to create the measure with the URL. So we're going to call this one logo, just logo. And then we're going to paste the URL for that image. We're going to make sure we categorize this as an image URL. So Power BI knows that this URL is an is a URL, an image URL from the web. And then we simply just bring it into a visual that supports kind of visualizing image URL. So uh, card by default and bar charts don't uh, do that. But if we put it into like, let's say a table, for example, as you can see here, it's visualizing that image from the web. Just to note, if you're using this method is that not all images from the web that you will find works this way. You need to look for URLs that is suffixed with the file type. So PNG, SVG, JPEG, it needs to be at the very end. So it needs to be a direct URL to that image. So I use this method quite a lot because from my experience, it just makes it a little bit easier for me to manage, especially if my data is kind of in a table type format. However, you might have cases in which you have the images that you want to work with, but it's not online or on the web, you don't have a direct uh, URL link to those images and you want to use this uh, web version or, or this web way of getting data or getting image from the web. One trick or one website that I can recommend you to use is called image image BB. And this allows you to simply host uh, upload your images and host them and it will generate these direct URLs for you. So if we click start loading start to upload here, let me look for the images that I want to upload. So I'm going to select these four, these four, and then I'm going to select uploads. And then from here, what you'll notice is under the HTML full linked embed codes that it generates, 
you will see some individual image sources in here that ends with a, a direct URL URL here. So if you simply just copy everything, separates the URLs that you find. I'm just going to show you quickly how that looks like. So I'm going to copy. I'm just I've just copied the image source over here for the Apple logo. If I paste it in my source here, here we go. So it will or it should load the Apple logo. So that's pretty easy, as I mentioned, at least for me to maintain. However, one of the issues that you might encounter when using this method is that the reports or the machine that you're opening your reports with needs to be connected to the internet. And if it's not, then your images will fail to load when the report is opened. So in such cases, you might want to think about potentially storing your images directly into your model. So just looking back at this folder that we've been using for now, it's just a list of all the different logos for some of the companies that we want to show in our Power BI reports. So for us to store this image data into our reports, we simply go back to our report over here. Just gonna delete these visuals that we've created so far. And we're gonna go to get data. We're gonna go to more and we'll select folder here and click connect. We'll look for that folder that we have been using so far. So we found here, so this is the logos. If you hit okay, it will simply just give us a list of all those files, their names and their binaries. So we're gonna hit transform from here. And as you can see from here, it's giving us some really useful information about this image, the names, their extensions, the path. But the one that we're interested in is the binary, which we need to convert or at least set the parameters so that Power BI can recognize these as a binary file image. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new column here. We're gonna prefix, first of all, we're gonna name this one image. And we're gonna prefix it with this uh, with with this text string. And basically, what this does is it tells Power BI that the subsequent binary code that is concatenated to this is a base64 image, and that it just allows Power BI to understand that this is a base64, so that when we display it, it knows that it is a base64 image to show. So once you have done this, we're gonna add some more formatting to this. So we're going to use binary dot to text. And then we're going to reference the binary content that we have here. And then under the encoding, we're going to say that this is encoded or needs to be encoded in as base 64. So we're going to close it. And if you hit OK, you will see that it generates us this long string of text. So this basically stores your image in a base64 format. Uh, what we're going to do for now, uh, we're going to add actually another custom column just to count the characters in this because I want to show you guys something after. So we're going to use image. So I'm going to use text length to count the number of characters in that. So a uh, couple of thousand, which is absolutely fine. If you hit close and load now, it should add a new query for us here on the right hand side called logos. And if we put the name and the image, as you can see, as expected, it's just showing us all of the code that we have uh, formatted here in this image column. So what we're going to do is we're going to just convert or change the data category for this into an image URL. So Power BI knows that it needs to show it as an image. And there you go. So it's showing for the respective companies, the actual image for, uh, for their logos. So let me just add the text count over here, just so that we can use it as a reference. So this solution is great if you have images that are pretty simple and it's not too complex or it's not too detailed. It becomes an issue when the image is too complex because there is a character limit that uh, is applied to the 
columns in Power BI. So if you have a complex image, it requires more binary code to store, which will result in your images being cut off. So let me show you an example. So in this logos uh, folder, we had this image, Mona Lisa, which is significantly more detailed than the other logos. It has a lot more detail in this file. And as you can see, it's a lot bigger than these other files. So it's 836 kilobytes, whereas these ones are just sort of three, four. And I want to show you something. So because we are pulling from that folder, in theory, all we have to do from here is just hit the refresh button, which will automatically load that Mona Lisa logo for us. So what you can see or what you will see from here is that the there is a cutoff at the top, like it shows the image, but it doesn't show all of the image. And that's because if you look at the character count, it's quite a lot and there is a limit to this solution. So in cases like this, the community has already found several solutions and Chris Webb's one is actually something that has been around for a couple of years now and it basically resolves issues where you want to show highly complex images using this method. And the solution is pretty much just splitting the base64 code into several rows of data and then concatenating them using DAX. Now, I think that's great if you want to show complex images. However, if you just want to show complex images and sacrifice the quality of that image, what I would suggest is instead to use web applications like an image compressor to reduce the size of these files. So for example, what I've done uh, before this demo is I've created a compressed version of this Mona Lisa, which reduced the size of this image from 836 kilobytes to something like 54 kilobytes, which is something that this method can just use without any other solution. So I've just moved this m compressed version of Mona Lisa. I used this image resizer sites to reduce this quality. And now, what should happen, hopefully, is if I refresh this, we should be able to see the full image of Mona Lisa while not having the whole detail. I mean, for this purposes, it's, it's a pretty small one, so you can't even recognize that the quality is a lot lower, but it reduced the number of count, which means that uh, this solution can now show the full picture. SVG images is a good solution if you want to use images in your Power BI reports without it losing its quality if you expand or reduce their size. It also has the benefit of its properties being fully customizable using DAX, which means that you can create your own custom visuals without actually importing custom visuals into your Power BI reports. Let me show you an example. So here we are. Let's have a look at this SVG file of a star that I got off the internet and I just double clicked it and basically what it's showing is this star. Now, if you look at what this star actually is in a notepad, what you will notice is, is actually a, an XML with some properties here that defines how this star is drawn. So it's not really defined in pixels like you would, let's say in a PNG or a JPEG, but it just shows you how kind of this image is drawn. So let's say we want to show this star SVG image into our reports. So what we're going to do is we're gonna copy the SVG code underneath the star. We're gonna go to our Power BI report here. We're gonna create a new measure. We're gonna call this star. And we're gonna simply just paste that SVG code that we have created. And what we're going to do is we're actually gonna prefix it with something else. So I'm just gonna add another text here to add at the front of it. And this is basically what you need to prefix. So again, like the base64 method that we used earlier, this prefix just tells Power BI that this image URL is of type SVG. So it knows how to render it when you put it into the reports. So now that we've done that, we just simply need to categorize this as an image URL as before. 
And now if you put it again in a visual that supports visualizing image URLs, like a table, here we go. So as you can see, it shows us that star SVG. So as I mentioned before, because this file or this code that we have pasted before isn't like base64 where it's just a bunch of random text that you can't really customize. SVGs are stored in sort of XML, which means that you can add and modify properties based on the data that you want to link it to. So online you will find a bunch of different solutions that the community has created. One of them is Carrie Kolosko, which I've covered some of her works in the past uh, with using SVG as sort of a way to create custom visuals. So this one specifically is the one I demoed in one of my videos. If you want to learn how to implement this yourself, I did cover this already. But essentially, as you can see, these visuals with the bar or the linear gauges, which shows you progress versus targets, is all done using SVG. And it's tied to the actual data that we have in this semantic model. So if you look at the measures, as you can see, we use combinations of variables and calculations to adjust things like the width of the bars, the percentage fill, and where that target would be in that image. So I would say this is extremely useful, as I mentioned, just because of how flexible it is as long as you know what to write in this XML. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to use images as part of your Power BI report. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.